We did an analysis on these uh, patient specimens looking at a specific marker called defective mismatch repair, and this is the spell check system of the genome. And patients that have this uh, de defective or deficient uh, repair system actually have a good prognosis in terms of their outcome. Unfortunately, though, in the laboratory, uh, it looks like these cells are resistant to 5-FU chemotherapy, which is commonly used for colon cancer. So we were left with this quandary of are we harming patients? And so that's why these types of analyses were performed. So what we did is we took this marker and we looked at stage 2 and stage 3 patients. And in stage 2 cancer, it's not clear whether chemotherapy should be given to all comers. And so one can make the argument that these patients clearly that have this marker that effective mismatch repair do not benefit from chemotherapy and therefore it is reasonable not to treat them, spare them the potential toxicities of chemotherapy and allow them to just be observed. The study was about 1,500 patients and again it was the most definitive study that has been performed to date. It used a, a group of uh, investigators uh, and studies from uh, over the uh, Atlantic, meaning patients from France, Italy, Canada, the United States, and also our, our analysis that brought in uh, patients from throughout the United States led by uh, the cooperative group, the NSAVP, headquartered in Pittsburgh. Well, we really wanted to determine whether indeed this marker is useful in predicting outcome, and I think uh, what we've been able to do is understand that the patterns in which the patients recur are, are different, and that's important in understanding how to apply treatment. What we were able to find is that indeed, patients that had the defective mismatch repair, another word is microsatellite instability high, these individuals did have a good outcome, and that was with surgery alone, and then when we added chemotherapy, there really was no additional benefit. Meaning, if we looked at the time of recurrence patterns, looking year to year to see how the patients do, they do just fine. The curve is linear, and the patients, regardless of whether chemotherapy is given, do well. If we look at the other group of patients, those called the proficient mismatch repair patients, they do, after surgery, have a recurrence risk of about right around the two to four year mark, and that this is improved or, or reversed with the use of chemotherapy. So. In contrast, these patients really do benefit from chemotherapy. When an uh, oncologist is trying to make a decision and they're speaking to the patient and they happen to be one of these patients that has this marker, then it's possible that they can, they can just be observed and not have to undergo chemotherapy. And that's really a, a very comforting message for some folks. It's important, though, to recognize this does not apply to stage 3 colon cancer patients, nor does it apply to patients that are potentially to receive oxaliplatin chemotherapy, which is another chemotherapy combination that's commonly used. Most importantly, it's hopeful that this research will help patients and providers today in helping to make decisions in regards to treatment. Quite frankly, this is a very inexpensive test that is readily available. It's performed on tissue that is sitting in the basement of many, many community hospitals, so it can be readily done. And uh, one uh, discussion with your uh, medical oncologist might be, can I have this test added to the uh, pathology review of my cancer? So uh, yeah, it's, it's readily available, and this is an applicable test. I think our data in a very large uh, analysis looks at a specific marker, the defective mismatch repair marker, that helps decide whether patients should be treated with chemotherapy that consists of a rapid infusion 5-FU and leucovorin. And in the stage two setting, it makes the argument that these patients do well and that chemotherapy has little or no impact and therefore they may be spared uh, toxicities associated with treatment. Now, where will it go from here? We're looking at the marker in regards to patients that receive oxaliplatin-based chemotherapy, looking at both stage two and stage three individuals.